I just installed a new battery into my vehicle and it should start without a problem this morning. We'll just turn the key over and... Come on, nothing. It is completely dead, so the battery wasn't a problem. If your vehicle doesn't start the following day after you've parked it, doesn't mean your battery needs to be replaced. Let's open the hood here first and disconnect the battery before we go deeper into this and do the draw test. I got this side post battery wrench that's covered in plastic so you won't short your battery while taking off the cables and maybe accidentally touching the frame with a wrench. Usually they are just 7-8 though. Then set the cable aside making sure it won't bounce back to the terminal. As you saw I disconnected the negative side. But it doesn't really matter what side you do. I'm just using this bolt to have something to clamp my wires to. So I threaded in this hole where the cable was. Don't use a wrench to tighten it, your fingers will be plenty. If your vehicle has a second battery, you just disconnect one of the cables. If you have a topos battery, the test will be the same, but the battery will look different. And if you have a hard time getting your alligator clips on them, just use some vice grip on the poles and connect the clip to the grip. Now to the probable cause. There could be something in your car that is eating away at the battery. In other words, it didn't go into standby mode and is using up all the power from the battery. In mechanical terms drawing current. So you want to find out how much current or power is running away from your battery into the vehicle and then where all the power is going. And I'll show you how to do that. So I got this roll of wires here that you want to connect to one end of the battery. Actually don't put it on the fuse box. You will need to get in there so we'll take the lid off and set it aside. Then clamp your test lead to the battery terminal and the other side to either the battery cable or just a good ground. But before that, let me show you a trick. You might want to be able to get in your vehicle while testing, but when you open the doors, your dome lights will come on and draw a lot of current. So let's fool the system and make it think the door is closed even though it is open. Got him! Watch to the end to see how to undo this, this is important. Let's get our multimeter set up. Plug in one test lead into the black or ground port and the other, this is important, in the 10 amp fuse port. Don't put in the 400 milliamp fuse port or you'll burn the fuse in your multimeter. Set your multimeter where you can easily see it. One lead will eventually go to the ground and the other will be attached to the battery terminal. Don't attach the lead from your multimeter to ground yet. Just take the clip from the spool of wire that we have and connect it for a while. That will connect the vehicle to the battery again and fire up all the computers in the vehicle causing a big current draw that you don't want going through your multimeter. Leave it like that for like 5 minutes. Some vehicles or some manufacturers want it up to 30 minutes but we'll be fine with 5 minutes on this one. And all the computers should be in standby mode. After the 5 minutes are over, connect the multimeter to a good ground. Let's finally fire up the multimeter and turn the dial all the way to the A or 10A for the 10 amp fused position and not the MA for the 400 milliamp position. My meter starts off in AC current but we want DC. So I got to press this button to get a straight line with dashes on top of it instead of a wavy line. Let's disconnect this clip so we don't have power running through these wires, but all the current going through these, the multimeter. Otherwise we don't get a correct reading. So take the clip off and set it aside where it won't touch any metal. There. What do we see in the multimeter now? Over 2 amp? That's way too much. Under 0.03 amp is ideal. A little more won't hurt either if it is a daily driver. But there is no chance this battery will hold charge overnight. Earlier I said that we need to get into the fuse box. It's time now. All these fuses are different circuits. So you want to pull out one at a time and watch your meter to see if the number drops. Once you pulled out the fuse, do not push it back in. Put it aside and keep pulling until the number on your meter drops. Because if you push it back in, you might fire up a module and cause another current spike that could burn the fuse in your multimeter. You might want to take a picture before pulling all the fuses so you know what fuse goes where. Unless you have a very good memory of course. I'm just using a regular needle nose plier to pull the fuses. First one out and it didn't really change so on to our next fuse. Still no change. 
You saw that? There is where all the power goes. Now, how do we go from here? I'll show you, no worries. Check what fuse it was, then you know what circuit to check. It is a 20 amp fuse for our auxiliary power plug inside the truck. But not only that, it also powers the OBD2 plug on many vehicles. Let's go inside and see what's going on. Before we do that though, I'm going to connect my wire back to the ground so I can put my fuses back in and test stuff. You saw how it jumped up when I put the 12 volt auxiliary fuse back in? There is definitely something take more than it should. Now disconnect the wire from the ground again and let's see where the draw is. Ha! <laughs> the truck still thinks the door is shut. So we got a bunch of stuff here. Let's start with this handy heated seat. Pull it out and watch the meter. Drops right down. Plug it back in and we are right at about 2 amps. Let's confirm this, unplug it and it goes down. Plug it in again, back to hungry. It's definitely this seat. Let's do it again, just to be 100% sure. 0 0.022 and then plug it back in, 1.9. This is actually a customer's vehicle, so I'll have to tell them to just unplug the seat when they're not driving the vehicle. It could also be something plugged in in the OBD2 port that could draw current out of the battery or even some bad wiring. One customer came in with a Dodge Journey and had the same problem, a tiny draw, but on their vehicle it was the circuit that fed the Bluetooth for the radio. Since he didn't use the Bluetooth anyways, I just pulled the fuse and no problem since. So if this was any help to you, please smash that like button and YouTube will recommend this video to more people. Don't be selfish, come on. Back to the truck. After you found and repaired the problem, just turn off your multimeter and pull all the wires out of the truck. Best part, they're easy to roll up and there's a link for them in the description. Take out the bolt if you use one or your vice grip if you use them instead. And just reconnect your battery cable to the battery. Snug it up, but not too tight. Close the fuse panel after you made sure the fuse are all right in there. Yep, just like that. Carefully close the hood. Your door is still closed according to the vehicle, but actually, you can close it. So, while you pull on the door handle, take a screwdriver, push the latch back, and the door closes as it is supposed to close. Now, hit that like button. And to see more, hit that subscribe button. But if videos aren't enough, follow me on Instagram, where I try to post every Friday. Thanks for watching.